Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition, and in this video I wanted to review some spotting tips for beginners so that you guys can get the most out of your workout. Now this might be a longer video because at the tail end I want to give you some tips on sort of how to spot yourself just in case you train alone. But first let's take a look at training with a partner. And so as you've seen in many of my videos now, I always like to first address the question of why. So why would you want a spotter? Well if you're new to training, they can keep you safe from injury. They can help you squeeze out an extra rep or two and push your limits so that you can elicit an adaptation response from your body. They can correct your technique if you're unaware of certain movements that you're making, and they can also help keep you motivated and make your workouts more fun and more enjoyable. But what they're not there to do, and I see this all the time, is to appease your ego and lift the weights for you. I'm going to use my good friend Lee's in this video to help me demonstrate a few points. Most importantly being what I just mentioned, and that's that the point of a spotter is not for tandem lifting. Now Liz is strong, but she's not benching two plates for reps, and loading the bar with all that extra weight is doing absolutely nothing for her. Sure, maybe some people are watching and it looks cool, but you can trust me on this that you're going to look a lot cooler when you actually see some results by pushing a weight that you can actually lift, even if it's only for a rep or two, by yourself. The bottom line is that a spotter is there to help you get the most out of your workout by keeping you safe and giving you a very slight boost only and let me emphasize only when you need it. They're not supposed to rob you of all of your gains by lifting the weight for you. So let's quickly review some common problems that I see aside from the tandem lifting. Rule number one should always be communication. Your spotter needs to know what your target rep range is. So you need to tell them, hey, I'm aiming for 8 or 10 or 12 or whatever. You also need to say now or help or something if you think that you're about to fail and drop the weight. Your partner is not clairvoyant. And if you're about to fail, if you can, you need to let them know. For example, this is a super lightweight warm-up for me. And I tell Lee's, no worries, I got this. And you can take a step back. On the other hand, she tells me she's clearly going for 15 reps. And I keep close and I keep an eye on her just in case. Don't worry, we will cover the actual spotting techniques for certain exercises in just a moment. But next, you also need to take the limitations of your spotter into consideration. And this is what I mean. So here I'm benching four plates, and if you watch carefully, my fat butt is lifting off of the bench as I struggle to push this weight up. So I'm getting close to my one rep max. And while I'm training with Lee's, I'm not looking to smash any personal records. Because if I fail, she's the one breaking her back trying to lift that weight. So I take my partner's limitations into account, and I'll save the maximum lifting for another day. And I'll stick to some slightly lighter weights. And that could be for 8 or even 5 repetitions, where I can still get a great strength benefit. But if I fail, I might only need a 10 to 20% boost to re-rack the weight. And so for example, if I stick between 2 and 3 plates, even exhausted with a light spot, I could re-rack the weight and I won't injure my spotter. Next try and stay focused. The lifter has heavy metal objects dangling over their head and they're counting on you just in case. So please try and give them your undivided attention. It's only for like 20 seconds. Okay, so let's go over some common examples of spotting technique. And we'll start with the bench press. I would advise in the beginning against using grips that can cause the bar to become unbalanced. So no one handing it in the beginning. And I'll break this up into a few different segments like the lift. After a while, many lifters like myself, for example, don't use a lift, but for a beginner, it's a good idea. And what I'm looking to do with the lift is to help my partner unrack the weight and lightly guide them to the start position. As soon as I see that they're ready and they have control, I give a verbal cue and I say, you got this, and I proceed to let them lift. Now, if it's a heavier weight, I track their movement and I stay ready just in case they need me but notice that I'm not touching the bar to interfere with their lift. If this were a heavier weight, I assume almost a lunge position with my legs so that I have good leverage to lift, and I use an overhand grip on the bar as I help the lifter unrack their weight and bring it to the start position. And I make sure that they are ready before I let go of the bar. We've already communicated, and so I have a rough idea of what she's going for. And so during the lift, I'll track the movement and stay close. If she hits a sticking point, then I'll give her a very light spot just to keep her moving. Again, I'm not going to lift it for her, just enough for her to keep her momentum. 
if I see she's failing and the bar is moving downward and not upwards, then I'll use some force. Now, if I see she's about to completely fail, I quickly use an evenly spaced overhand grip from a lunge position and I use enough force to quickly re-rack the weight. I don't want to take the risk of the weight falling on her. Under normal circumstances though, I let her finish her set with no interference and when she's done, I guide the bar back to make sure that it's properly back on the rack. For squats, there are many different methods that people will use, but I will walk you through step by step how I will do it. First, I ask her how many she's going for, and if it's a heavier weight, I'll help her unrack the weight by simply using my hands to guide the bar back to the start position. Now, Lise can squat way heavier than this, and I know it's a weight that she can easily handle, and so I take a step back and I give her room, but I keep an eye out just in case. Now, if this were a heavier weight, or I notice that she's struggling a bit, I step in and I track her movement, and I'll keep my arms out by her side, but unless she needs me, I don't, and I emphasize I don't touch her. My goal as a spotter is that I want her to work. Now for squats, if she's about to fail or she needs a spot to finish the last rep or two, then I'll spot her like this, where I assume almost a lunge position behind her so that I have enough leverage with my legs, and I use my forearms and my arms to lock her into place. I'm basically going to lock her close to my core, which is my center of gravity. I'm simultaneously squeezing my forearms and elbows towards each other to lock her snugly into position. And then I'm not using my arms, but she's locked close to my core so that I can lift her with my legs. And you may be asking why? Well, most time when a person fails in squats, they tend to fall forward. And so I need to be able to control her forward momentum. Also, if your partner is going extremely heavy and they fail with three, four, five, or six plates, you're not going to be able to lift that weight solely with your arms. So you'll have much better leverage if you lock them up to your core and lift with your legs. Also a quick note guys, yes I know obviously she's a girl and I'm not groping her. My hands are in a fist under her armpits and up against her shoulders. I know it may look awkward, not just for a girl but also obviously if you were spotting a guy, but it's not as awkward as if they were to drop the weight. When she has finished her lift, I usually guide the bar back to the rack just to make sure that it's safe for her to release it. So spotting all barbell exercises, if you're a beginner, and let me emphasize that as advanced lifters may do something completely different, but in the beginning, the key will be to use an even spotting technique using both hands to keep the bar level and balanced. So whether it's the bench press, military press, or maybe barbell curls, try your best to get just enough of a spot to keep the momentum going and try to keep the bar level. So I'll use both hands evenly as a beginner, and I'm not going to one-hand it like this. Now dumbbells are a completely different story than the barbell. The danger for beginners, and remember this video is basically for beginners, is that they don't often have the strength of the supporting muscles to stabilize the lift. And it may happen that the forearm collapses towards their face while they have a dumbbell in hand. It could also happen that they lose control and have their shoulders externally or internally rotate and they drop the weights, so you need to be mindful. So if they're relatively new to training, you may want to guide them at the wrist and be there just in case they fail. They may find it a little bit uncomfortable, but it's safer until they get used to training. If they're a little more experienced with dumbbells, then you may want to spot at the elbow. But remember to only spot when they need it. And you still also need to keep your eyes out for those weights falling inwards towards them. Also notice that I get down to her level in a lunge position so that I actually have good leverage to spot her if I need to. If I were standing up tall or simply bent at the lower back, I'm going to be useless if she fails with a heavier weight. I'll do the same thing for shoulder presses or whatever. Here I'm at her level, lunge position and ready to spot her if she needs it. Also on her last rep, I usually track her movement and guide the weights back down just in case. Now to make this video a little more interesting than most, let's give you some ideas to spot yourself if you happen to train alone. If you're all alone, well I always use the clips even for a lighter weight. Way better safe than sorry. Next if you're all alone and you really want to push yourself without risking your life, well an easy way to stay safe for bench press, military press, squats and a bunch of other lifts is to use the power rack and set the safety bar so that if you fail, you can just set the weight down and step out from underneath. On this site, you can check the videos for squats in a power rack or making a home gym to give you an idea of how to set up the power rack. So for barbell exercises like chest, shoulder press, squats, if you're alone and you're gonna go heavy, do yourself a favor and use the rack. 
For bicep curls or exercises like shrugs, you can also use the power rack, or like I'm using here, a platform so that you don't have to pick up the bar all the way from the floor. I love deadlifting, but I'll save deadlifting for another day. Also, during these cheat curls, I keep my knees bent to keep the pressure off of my lower back. Now, I know I may sway slightly during the cheat curls, but that's cool, as they're cheat curls and the weight's actually heavier than me. But by keeping my knees bent, my back is relatively safe, and using that platform, I can just plop the bar down when my arms are spent. So for heavy curls and shrugs, you may want to use the rack or the platform. Next, if you're using a leg press machine, then set the safety block so that the machine won't go lower than a certain level. This way, if you had to, you could just slide out. And also, you can give yourself a spot by placing your hands on your knees and giving just a little bit of a push if you need it. And there's also a video on this site for leg presses as well. Now, dumbbells are absolutely great if you train all alone because unlike the barbell, you won't get trapped underneath the bar. Using the dumbbells, you could just set them down. So for solo training, they're just awesome. And now if you're used to training alone with dumbbells, it's usually not the spot because if you fail, like I said, you can set them down, but it's usually the lift and getting them into position is the problem. So I'll give you a few tips to use for the dumbbells. For most of my presses with dumbbells, so for flat, decline, etc., I use two benches in a formation like so. I place the pair of dumbbells on one bench and then I simply maneuver them onto my thighs. This way I don't waste all of my energy for the setup. I'm mindful to make sure that the area is clear on either side of me, just in case I need to dump the weight. And I find this technique works well if you're alone and you're going heavy. This gym only has 145 pound dumbbells, but at other gyms I use the exact same technique to press 175s or 180s even, without a spotter on a decline bench with no problem. The trick to training with dumbbells is to keep the weights tucked in close to your core as you descend down onto the bench and then only press them up once you're stable. When I'm finished my set, I bring the weights back to my core and I lower them to the floor one dumbbell at a time. Then I'll return them to the perpendicular bench for the next set. Next for incline presses, you could use the two benches to set up the weight and that's no issue, but the problem is the lift. Now many guys feel comfortable using one leg at a time to knee up the dumbbells. And if you can pull that off, then go for it, but just be careful. I always found it infinitely easier, especially if you're going super heavy, to set the weights on your thighs and then stand up just slightly. And then I use the momentum of myself along with the weights to roll back onto the bench. I keep those weights tucked to my core as I roll back. And then only once I'm stable, do I press them up. When I'm done the lift, I bring the weights back to my core and then back to my thighs. And then I'll replace them back on the perpendicular bench. But unless it's an emergency, I do not drop those weights from four feet up in the air onto the floor. Similarly, for shoulder presses, many guys use one leg at a time to lift up the dumbbells. And if you're comfortable doing that, then more power to you. But I always found it easier to have the weights on my thighs and then use a hip thrust to gain momentum as I stand up with the weight. Then I clean it into position and I hold it close to my core with my shoulders as I sit back down onto the bench. Once I'm stable, I press it up. It will take some practice, but in my younger days, doing this with 120, 130 pound dumbbells was completely feasible even if I was all alone. Once you're finished your lift, control the weight as you bring the dumbbells back down to your shoulder. Keep it close to your core and then place it back down on your thighs. Once again, unless it's an emergency, do not drop those weights from four feet up in the air. Finally, let's take a look at a couple of common bodyweight exercises, like tricep dips, for example. If you're alone and looking to add some weight to your dips, first make sure that the two benches are properly spaced for you and that you already have the weight next to you on the bench. You can carefully lie back on the bench, keep your balance, reach over, grab the weight and place it on your lap. Then return your hands to the proper position next to you and press up using your triceps. Now this technique is usually pretty good up to three plates. Using more weight than that, I find the weights begin to slide and become unstable, but it's still a good exercise to add to your repertoire. Finally, I see that there's a lot of people that want to do wide grip pull-ups, which is great, but they lack the upper body strength in the beginning. Well, if that's the case and you're alone, use a bench. So you're gonna stand on the bench and assume your position and keep one foot on that bench for balance but also to give yourself a slight boost if you need it. Try using just enough force with your leg to help you complete the movement. And before you know it, you're gonna be doing pull-ups like a champ in no time. Now, I know there's tons of different spotting techniques and I don't wanna make this an endless video, 
but I hope that these ones will give you guys that are new to training some tips to help keep you safe and to help you guys get the most out of your training. This has been Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition, and if you like these videos, then please click below to like or subscribe, as we're constantly posting up great tips and new ideas that are meant to get you into the absolute greatest shape possible.